Hi, this is Patty Miner, and I am so excited that we just we got back from the social retail conference that we went to, and there were some really amazing takeaways, really amazing ones. Um, I guess I'll start out with Justin's uh, thing where he said, we don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. That's an interesting quote, so I'm going to say it again. We don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. And that made me think back to my Uncle Daryl that raised me. He was a kind, wonderful gentleman. And he always would, if I came home and I was upset with Peggy or somebody, uh, just I'm throwing out a name there. I can't remember who I was actually upset with in fourth grade or fifth grade or sixth grade. But I would come home and he'd say, what do you think she thinks about you? What is she telling her mother right now? And it made me realize that, oh, I was looking at the world the way I thought it was, but not who I am. And then he, thought me, he taught me to forgive and to think kindly of other people. And that made me a different person. Once you become a different person, it, it's, a, it's amazing how your world expands and you become better and you become nicer and you think the whole world's nicer. Once you become nicer, you know, you don't notice other people, you don't notice diamond rings until you have one. You don't notice a white car until you have one. You don't notice a house until you buy one. You notice what you are and you see the world as you are. It's like the, the little, the guy that was coming past a town, there was an old man sitting in the town and there was a new person coming in and he said, what is this town like? And the guy said, what was your last town like? And he said, oh, the people were terrible. They gossiped. They were bad. And he said, well, our town's pretty much like that too. The next passerby came by and he says, what is this town like? And he said, what was your last town like? Oh, they were wonderful. We all got along great and it was great. And he said, well, this town is a lot like that too. So you don't see the world as it is. You see the world as you are. So if you're thinking it's bad, terrible, awful, change you. Change how you feel, how you think, how you see. Listen to better things. Observe more beauty and gorgeous, wonderful, awesome. Just change you. And then, then the world will get better. Um, uh, it also, oh, he also mentioned something about to hit the, his ancestors. And he said, what would your grandson or granddaughter say about you? You should be the one that changes the tide in your family. You be the one. You be the one that says, gosh, it all changed with them. They be, our family became closer. Everything became better. Um, you know, we were well off. We went from poor to rich. Whatever you want to do in your life, be the one that makes that change within your generations of your family so that your grandson or granddaughter can look back and say, wow, my grandparents were awesome. <laughs> <laughs> We're working for that one. Anyway, um, we also learned from Michelle about relationships. And she's talked about, you know how you have those relationships where there's either energy givers or energy suckers. And you look down at the telephone when you get a phone call and you go, oh. And then, and then somebody says, they, then you talk to them and, and they go, life is terrible. <laughs> she was funny when she said it. And then it was just like they're energy vampires. <laughs> she was really cute. She's darling. And and they just suck the life right out of you. Be an energy giver and not an energy vampire. <laughs> anyway, um, then she said, write down the number of the amount of money you want to make this year. Like whatever it is. This is a new year. This is a brand new time. 2018 should be amazingly on fire and wonderful. And uh, she said, write down the amount of money you want to earn. It was a social conference. So then she said, now double it. That's what you're going to do. So, so you can close your eyes and visualize what you want to have happen. Go through it in your mind. Go through what would happen if you got what you wanted. And then live it. Live the dream. Do what you need to do. Make it happen. Make it work. And it's so fun. Then we learn from Margie to ignite. Ignite and be on fire with our dreams this year. Um, there's 12 unwritten chapters and 365 days and we should just write on it. We have a pen in our hand and we can start fresh and we can get it done and do what we need to do. 
We also learned some really great principles. Those were the three basic takeaways that I had, but we also learned some great principles how to time block and um, try to get your uh, calendar. I live by my planner. My planner is my life. <laughs> so in, when I was, you know, my kids were little, if they said, do you want to play Barbies, Mommy? Did you write it in your planner? <laughs> they knew it would get done if I wrote it in my planner. So I'm a planner person, and I still haven't, I know it's on the telephones, but I still have a paper planner. <laughs> I still write in my planner and, and cross it off every day. But you can time block and say, I'm going to do my work. I'm going to make my telephone calls. I'm going to be on Facebook. I'm going to do whatever you have to do for your business. Make your calls, go door to door, whatever you have to do, whatever you have to do for your business. Time block. If you are an entrepreneur, a mom, not mompreneur or heartpreneur, as I've heard it, and lots of different things, if you have your own business and you set your own hours, then you need to set your own hours. But you have to have priorities so that when that little person comes in the room and wants to talk to you, you stop everything and say, my attention is on the little one or my attention's on my children, my husband, my family, my spouse, whomever is in your life that's important, that's, that you need to take time for. Turn off the telephone, turn off the television, turn off everything, and focus on them. Look at them. Feel their presence with you and, and what you need to do for them. Be that person for them. Be that happy, wonderful, energy giver, lover person that you need to be all in for that person, for that relationship, for that family. And then when you're finished, and a lot of times little people only need five minutes. You know, they just want, oh, I'm so excited right now. I've got to tell you and then goodbye. They go back and play with their toys and you can go back to work. So it's uh, time management and being able to work at home and be with the little people and stop when you can stop and start when you can start and say, I am going to do this from one o'clock to three o'clock. Maybe you're driving your kid to, to a, a class or a, a lesson or, or, or little league, you know, and you have an hour in the car or you have time, you spend time walking, you know, when you drive them to their event, Make sure you spend time talking to them, being with them, not on your phone or not listening or being on a phone call. Talk to them. Then later you can be on that phone call. So remember that the phone is not as important or your work is not as important as your family. But then get your work done when you do have that two-hour time block. So we learned that from Justin as well. So there was a lot of great takeaways as well as in our amazing new products we have. And, and uh, one of my best friends is the CEO of this new company. So I am really excited about life, and I'm excited about this company. And I'm excited about you, my friends, and my family. And I just, you are in my prayers. I love each and every one of you. And I hope you have a wonderful, happy, prosperous 2018.